Hi, welcome back to my channel, to our channel. Today is December 3rd. We're going to be reading from Alan on Literature. And um, I'm grateful that you're here with me. And thank you for the comments and the new subscribers, as well as the ones who have been returning every day with me as well. So let's go ahead and get reading. I will read from Courage to Change, One Day at a Time in Alan on and hope for today. All right, so let's see what page they're all on. They're all gonna be on the same page because they're daily reflections and somehow coordinated that way, which is great, which I love the synchronicity of that. And um, December 3rd, did not have this one marked. So we're gonna start from the hope for today page 338. Here we go. I found it relatively easy to make a decision to turn over my will and my life to God, the one of my understanding. So however, I didn't have any idea how to actually do it. I tried to turn myself over more times than a cook turns flapjacks at a pancake breakfast. <laughs> but I couldn't seem to let go completely. Finally, I found two techniques that work for me, a God box and a basketball net. So let's see what they have to say. So a wise Al-Anon member suggested the idea of a God box. I tested it when I felt perplexed about some calculations on my income tax form. On a small piece of paper, I wrote, the income tax forms are in your hands until tomorrow. I folded up the paper, put it in the box and let go, go for it, let go of it. So it was that simple and it actually worked. I was able to forget what I was obsessing about and get on with my day. I also use another letting go method. I call the basketball technique. This technique helps me let go of work when I come home with my head full of unfinished business. There's a basketball hoop in our driveway. Before going into the house, I play one-on-one -on -one with my higher power. With each shot at the basket, I imagine the ball is one of my work projects. The hoop symbolizes my higher power. If the shot is good, then I've turned that issue over. If I miss, I keep shooting. Finally, the last thing I let go of is the ball. After I take the time for myself, I can go comfortably into the house and enjoy being a husband and a father or a mother, wife, or just at home, <laughs> relaxing, moving on with the day. So the thought for the day, if I, si if I supply the willingness my higher power will supply the way. And um, there's a quote from Paths to Recovery. It'll be on page 29. And it says, there are many ways to approach turning our will and our lives over as there are definitions of God. Okay, so that gives some ideas from this hope for today of how to let go different techniques. You can take what you need or relate to and throw out the rest in a basketball hoop. Interesting. Or the God box. Someone had said something about the God box. I've never made one of those. Uh, I thought it was a cool idea, but I have not done that. Just admittedly, I, I don't know. Will I do that? Maybe I'll do that one day. 
just seem to be so busy with so many other things, right? So I had something written down though, because I'm like, I bet willingness is gonna come up today. And here I had this, uh, it says, when I'm willing to do the right thing, I am rewarded with an inner peace. And when I'm unwilling to do the right thing, I become irritable, restless, discontent, and insecure. So I thought, yeah, I was uh, moving some things around, opening up books that I've written in and seeing what I need in my space. And I'm like, so when I opened it up and it said willingness, I thought, oh, I bet that's gonna come out today. And it did. So let's read the next one. One day at a time in al -Anon. the classic. And I don't remember what page I told you, so I will find it again. 338. Maybe, I, I think I have the next one. I think I have courage to change marked, so hopefully. All right, so let's move on. Here we go. There are questions, and many of us ask them, that lead us straight down the dead end street of frustration. Here's one of them. Why can't they fill in the blank? Why can't, uh, what is, what are, what are they up to? And why can't I make them see fill in the blank? So they're, they're simple, but they say a lot. They reveal our conviction that we're in control, that we know what ought to be done, that our wisdom is greater than someone else's. They lead to frustration because we're not in control. And we're not in control of anyone or anything but ourselves. So in this book, the book's called The Sign of Jonas, Jonas, the noted writer Thomas Merton says, quote, stop asking yourself questions that have no meaning. Or if they have, you'll find out when you need to. Find out both the question and the answers. And today's reminder, I will rather ask myself, what prompts me to do or say things that cause trouble? Why do I concentrate on someone else's shortcomings instead of my own? To such questions, I can find the answers. If I dig deeply and honestly enough. So, there's the quote at the end, but there's no um, quoted person. It just says, speculating on other people's attitudes and motives is a waste of time and effort. To search out the reasons for my own is a voyage of discovery. Mm. Right? This is pretty... You feeling that? I'm feeling it. Some things coming up today about how, um, like there's a story about, um, let's see, let me just take it from my experience. It's so easy to see it from other people. You know, that's what this was, that reading's about. Like I could see how other people do it and say things, not me, you know, I'm not doing that, but let me see how I can, what's the, um, I can say it from the way I'm thinking, like for instance, how I would think about, like how I would want um, my, my parent, for instance, uh, once upon a time, I wanted my parent to, uh, to, uh, not do something that offended me and um, made me feel a certain way. Like I wanted to be acknowledged. And so like when I was growing up in that situation, 
um, I felt like I needed to survive in order to, like sometimes I would say something and then I would realize that like it would, like I was, I, I would get confused about it, but I would, you know, like it's about survival. So I would choose to not say anything a lot of the times because I thought, well, I'm not getting the results. I get better results if I don't say anything, right? So then when I, I'm an adult, obviously, I'm in my 50s. So uh, throughout my adult life, I carried that behavior over, but yet I was always having this craving of wanting to be heard or wanting to be acknowledged, mainly from my parents when I was growing up, but I didn't get that filled. So then I took it into my significant relationships, even in the workplace as well. So I would want to be acknowledged or I want them to see that I have something to say and I wanted to be heard. Um, and then I'd be like, why aren't they, why aren't they acknowledging? Why aren't they telling me? So then I'd have to say like, this is how I'm feeling, uh, you know, but it was all that from, bef from when I was growing up because I didn't, I didn't have that, um, let's see, that identity or um, I don't even know what it's called. I guess it's like that uh, self-confidence knowing that I was okay, like, because I didn't have that maybe when I was growing up in that alcoholic situation, because, you know, all the attention would go on to what the alcoholics doing, you know, like, and then like, you know, we were okay, but they weren't. So they would get the care, you know, like, so it was, or the attention that, and, you know, if you would ask a question to, um, to my dad, for instance, you know, God love him. Um, he's no longer here, but um, there would be a lot of times when I would ask him a question, he would just, you know, it would be funny for a little while and, you know, we would have a good time and, you know, with our visit. And, you know, by the end of the visit, he would already been drinking quite a bit and he'd be snappy, like, you know, like, or he'd be, he'd say something that was really harmful to feel like feelings and things like that. So I'd be like, can we talk about it? And he's like, no, we're not talking about it. Go to your room. I don't want to talk to you. And I was like, what the hell? So like, anyway, I know it's just, it's, I'm getting a little confused about that because, you know, it gets confusing when I want to get acknowledged. And before I came into this program, I would just always try to bring it up to like my mom or, um, like, you know, this is what happened when we were younger and like, maybe she's not ready to hear it. And um, I have to be okay with that because it's about like, that's what um, is cool about the meetings. For instance, I can talk about that to people in the meeting and to my sponsor and work those things out with them and then see progress within myself. So then I can develop that self-confidence, but also like, I'm not alone because I'm, I have my higher power, the one of my understanding. So, and that also includes you guys, right? Because we have interaction, we have a connection. So yeah, I don't know. That's a long story, but like when we're, sh when we, when we spot it, we got it, right? So like, if we're trying to pick other people, like, yeah, maybe they're they're using drugs and alcohol and it's like really getting to us, right? Well, we can figure out how to have some boundaries for that. We don't necessarily have to leave the relationship, especially because, you know, maybe there's, there's good qualities in the relationship. It's just maybe we're too invested in trying to fix them. And, um, you know, we have to allow them to have the dignity to do that on their own, you know, like we are like, like, that's the idea. I'm not necessarily the best at it, but that's the concept that I'm trying to work with here. So let's see what courage to change has to say. <laughs> so, and I'd like to hear like, if you guys have um, any thoughts about it, it would be awesome. 
And so like just for today, my trusty bookmark, let's see. Uh, I will be agreeable. Let's try it. I will look as well as I can, dress becomingly, keep my voice low, be courteous, criticize, not one bit. I won't find fault with anything, nor try to improve or regulate anybody by myself or but myself. Yeah, I will be agreeable. Just keep my chin up. I like that. I will adjust myself to what is just for today and not try to adjust everything or anybody to my own desires. I will take my luck as it comes and fit myself to it. And just for today, oh, I will have a program and I may not follow it exactly, but I will have it. I will save myself from two pests, hurry and indecision. Okay, you spot it, you got it. We can acknowledge our feelings. We just don't need to criticize. We don't need to criticize other people so that we can feel that we're being heard. Like, um, I'm gonna find my cards. Well, maybe it's not supposed to be meant to be to re be read, but like, um, yeah. Less, less criticizing others because a tolerant, uncritical awareness of others will gradually change my personality for the better so that I can have my serenity. Serenity, that's my goal. And that's mine to have for me. You know, like that's who can give it to me, me and my higher power, not anybody else, not my not my family, not my anybody, not my friends. Nobody can give me serenity because I demand it because I'm gonna tell you who's right and who's wrong and all that great stuff it doesn't work. So, um, so if I try each day to put my point of view and my attitudes on a sound spiritual basis, and do the work within my relationships. I know it will change all the circumstances of my life for the better. And I'll see the results in the way other people respond to me. And in my, in the, in my daily, and how my daily needs are met. So concern, love and kindness on my part will be reflected in everything that takes place in my life. And that's from page 246 in One Day at a Time in Elan from September 2nd. I love that. I'm glad I read it. And changed attitudes can aid recovery and to help families of alcoholics. That's what we're here to do, to help our families of of these alcoholics and the alcoholism and all that stuff, you know, and it's uh, to give understanding. That's all we can do. See, I like to live in the moment without guilt or fear. And um, when we are willing to be happy, to choose to remember the good memories can heal us and our attitudes about the effects of alcoholism in our childhood. Or, yeah, my ex-partner or the alcoholics in my life, when we are willing to be happy, to choose to remember the good memories. That can heal us. We don't necessarily have to accept them to come back in our lives. We don't have to do that. But if we want to heal ourselves and, you know, like be in a good place for you, 
you know, living in resentment and anger doesn't, um, doesn't help. You just need to be like, okay, I understand what I, what it's okay for me and what's not okay for me. And um, yeah, take what you need and leave the rest. So what is meditation? Courage to change, here we go. What is meditation? Alanon leaves that question open for us, for each of us to answer in our own way. So drawing upon the experiences of other Al-Anon members can help us to find our own path. Here are only a few of the ways members of the fellowship have shared. To me, meditation is a higher spiritual awareness. I practice remembering that every action can serve a spiritual purpose. I go to a quiet place. I close my eyes and repeat the words of the serenity prayer to myself in a gentle voice. I need to get beyond my thoughts. And so I concentrate on my breathing, counting from one to 10 over and over as I breathe in and out. I simply step back and watch my thoughts as if I were watching a play. I try to keep my attention on the present day only, leaving the past and the future alone. I focus on a flower. When my thoughts stray, I accept that my mind is just doing its job, thinking, and then gently return to my subject. In my mind, I picture my higher power's hands. One by one, I place my problems and worries, my joy, my gratitude into those hands. And finally, I climb into. That's beautiful. How do you guys meditate? How do you do it? Yeah, focusing on the breath is really one way that I do. Like if I'm feeling anxious and my mind is starting to go all over the place, which happens quite often, I'm like, oh, just, just come back here. And I will say the serenity prayer a lot. Like today, I had two cavities filled and um I was nervous I was like oh it's gonna hurt you know and um probably because I'm totally sober and I didn't go stoned you know like one of those things and um yes be totally sober now for um almost two years this is my month but um not yet it's one day at a time. So I was saying the serenity prayer because I was like, what will help me? So I thought, well, I'm here. My mouth is like getting the injections for the pain. And um, all right, let's go. So I, I was like, instead of, I told myself instead of worrying, which isn't going to help because you're already here, just say the serenity prayer. So I started going on and on in my head, serenity prayer. And um, it's, then it's done. So that was my meditation for today. But, and um, how do you guys do it? How do you do it? You know, meditating is just something where um, we can have a little bit of uh, control, possibly over our thoughts, because thoughts are like that you know, like what Mercury Hermes, it's like very chaotic. And instead of our thoughts taking us over, which they do easily, um, we can then kind of harness them, right? And say, you know, worry, thought, go away. You know, like those aren't real. Those are just anxiety. 
So then I can fill it in with something else. So I fill it in with prayer or I'll call somebody. I'll be like, oh no, I'm, I'm doing this thing. I can't stop worrying. It's like really when I realize I'm doing it, I'm like, okay, this isn't going to be good. So I'm just going to call somebody who's going to help me with that sanity. So then I go, how are you doing? How are you doing? And um, I'll tell them maybe if I'm having some anxiousness and then they'll kind of go, but you're okay now. Stay in the moment, stay present. No, you're doing good. You called me. I'm listening to my sponsor in my head. That's what she'll say. And it's good if you have two groups, you know, to have a sponsor in each one. So this way you can like call, you know, you have, you have some sanity grips there. So anyway, let's go ahead and say the serenity prayer. And um, yeah, thank you guys for the comments about yesterday and the day before. The readings have been really good for me. I'm grateful that they've been good for you too. You know, pretty intense. And um, yeah, making decisions also, I'm just going to make a point to say, it's up to you. It's your life, right? And um, you don't have to make a, de- you can always just not make a decision. You can just like, you know, see how it feels, you know, when we're, when you, you know, don't make decisions when you're feeling anxious, for instance, you know, have somebody to talk to and, um, you know, be safe. Very important. Be safe. And um, so today in A Course in Miracles was Lesson 249 at Forgiveness Ends All Suffering and Loss. Think about that. Forgiveness paints a picture of a world where suffering is over. Loss becomes impossible and anger makes no sense. Attack is gone and madness has an end. What suffering is now conceivable? What loss can be sustained? The world becomes a place of joy, abundance, charity, and endless giving. It is now so like to heaven that it quickly is transformed into the light that it reflects. And so the journey has just this beautiful light from which we came and there we go. You know, I just, I just think that's such a beautiful lesson today because um, yes, if we're willing to be happy, we can choose to remember the good. Just like the choosing, uh, uh, two le- two um, days ago when I when I wrote about uh, I choose you, you know I choose you. It's really powerful. I love reading that. It just like it opens my heart to think about you know choosing to love. So all right, enough of that because tomorrow is another day. Today is the day we're living. And um, let's go ahead and say the serenity prayer. All right, here we go. The we version. Nice deep breath in and out to be grounded and be present here with me. (laughs) God, grant us the serenity to accept the things we can't change. That's other people and other things. To have the courage to change the things we can. That's ourselves and our attitudes. And the wisdom to know the difference. God's will be done. So keep coming back. It works if you work it because you're worth it. Yay! High five. Fist bump. Okay, you guys. 
So I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Likes help people find us, right? And subscribe if you haven't already. Why not? It's fun. So you get notified. And comments are great because other people are commenting on the comments. Stay kind and loving. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye, you guys.